The beauty of ecofeminism is that it is very much aware uh, that there are multiple inequalities and all those inequalities are connected. If you care about the environment, it means you care about inequality. If you care about inequality, then it means you care about racial discrepancy, gender discrepancy, regional discrepancy, digital discrepancy, class discrepancy, and so on. So for me, an ecofeminist is someone who dares to connect the dots. So I want to talk about a word that is very close to my heart, ecofeminism. And I think it's something that we urgently and sorely need all across the world today, east and west, north and south. But what does it mean? Ecofeminism or ecological feminism, it is a branch of feminism. But then some people might say, well, actually, it's a branch of eco-awareness, eco-consciousness, or even climate activism. And I don't have a problem with that. I think whichever way you arrive at this concept is equally valid and is equally beautiful because it brings together several threads. However, on this YouTube channel, I pay a special attention to the etymology of words, to the trajectory behind, you know, the pedigree behind concepts. And therefore, in order to understand how the word was coined, we need to focus on feminist studies because that's where it came from. And for that, we need to travel to France and read the work of a feminist thinker, a scholar, a civil rights activist, Françoise Dubon. And she wrote an incredibly important book, a groundbreaking book, which was called Le Féminisme ou la Mort, which means feminism or death. And it has a very striking and a very strong title. The, the work itself was quite radical and eye-opening in the sense that she managed to bring together various issues within the same book. Basically, uh, we also need to bear in mind that this happened in 1970. So I'm not talking about 2021. It's easy to talk about um, intersectionality or climate activism relatively easy today. Uh, but back then, in early 1970s, it was very, very new and very few people were aware of ecofeminism. And this is what exactly Françoise Dubon did. So basically, she talks about a special connection between w women and nature, special in, in various ways. On the one hand, there are some traditionally attributed roles to femininity, like you know, nurturing, cooperation, taking care, caregiving. And she, of course, wants to expand these concepts. How do we connect with nature? How do we take care of our nature? But also, she's very much aware of the connection between women and nature in the sense that, for her, if you care about the oppression of women, you cannot separate that from the oppression of earth or destruction of our environment or vice versa, because these things have gone hand in hand. So it's a much more holistic approach, ecofeminism. And I think we need to bear in mind that uh, this is not a single issue. You know, if it, it also means that you care about inequalities, that you care about multiple issues at the same time. We need to bear in mind that we're not the owners of Earth. We're not the center of this universe. At a moment like this, when we see climate emergency accelerating in front of our eyes, we need to understand urgently that we're just a part of an ecosystem. And when we destroy that ecosystem, we're, we're, destro we're destroying our own lives. And also, of course, we're destroying the lives of plants and animals. So entire habitats get affected. And it is in that regard that I'm, I'm always excited when I think about ecofeminism because it manages to connect the dots. One other thing that ecofeminism did and still does is to bring together academia and activism. Now, usually these two things don't go hand in hand very well. Uh, academia has its own world and activism on the ground has its own world. But within ecofeminism, they need to be brought together. So the mind, the intellectual accumulation is important, but the activism is equally important, not only in the sense of going out and protesting on the streets, which is incredibly important, but also activism in the sense that we need to reconnect with Earth. 
gardening, taking care of trees, being aware of the problem, of the huge problem that deforestation brings and etc. And the second thing that I want to add is that when we think about uh, environmental destruction, we need to bear in mind that women are much more affected by this than men. Right? So the consequences of climate catastrophe will be much harder and harsher for women. All the NGOs, you know, all the reports that have been prepared by NGOs underline this. Recently, there was a Un United Nations report that showed 80% of people who have been displaced because of climate emergency were actually women. Women are... Um, caregivers, they provide food, they bring the water. So if there's extreme heat or drought or, or shortage of water, etc., women have to travel longer distances. Also, whenever there is chaos and displacement, we see an increase in gender violence, violence against women. So in many ways, women, women are going to be much more affected uh, from the, all of these catastrophes. And we need to bear in mind that women hold underpaid, undervalued jobs already. There's one more example I want to share with you. You will remember in 2005 when Hurricane Katrina happened and the flooding uh, that, that followed, that ensued, it was African-American women who were much more affected, disproportionately uh, affected from this tragedy. So what I'm trying to say is, the beauty of ecofeminism is that it is very much aware uh, that there are multiple inequalities and all those inequalities are connected. If you care about the environment, it means you care about inequality. If you care about inequality, then it means you care about racial discrepancy, gender discrepancy, regional discrepancy, digital discrepancy, class discrepancy, and so on. So for me, an ecofeminist is someone who dares to connect the dots. Say